Hey everybody, Jay here. Um, I want to say first, thank you so much to Miles Away. Uh, Miles Away was kind enough to uh, lend me this thing. This is the Elta Solar 42F. It's a sort of, they say drone, but drone's not quite right. It's, um, it can drone, as you can hear. But it's, uh, it's a lot more than just a drone. It can do arpeggiations, it has a little sequencer here, it also has a sequencer in the keyboard itself. Uh, you can split up this keyboard into two keyboards, uh, you can use the three main sections, these drone oscillators, these uh, weird ball oscillators, <laughs> that's the technical term, and then these uh, traditional, more traditional VCOs, all as separate things. What it feels more like than a drone synth to me so far, and I've only explored it for about an hour, is like they were trying to create a Eurorack case. This feels like a prefab Eurorack case. It even has effects, as you can see, I've got all these effects chips laid out, some of the ones I think are interesting. The idea here is mainly to have a, a full creative palette to do everything you would want to do, as far as I can tell. Uh, so, so what I'm planning to do is just explore it. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, and I've learned a couple things so far, and I think it's worth telling you about them, and then I will see if I can start to compose on it. So I've got the, the filters linked right now, uh, which links the cutoffs, which means that as you turn one cutoff knob, it turns both of them. What's interesting, though, is that you can turn the resonances to different amounts, so so even though you've got the, um, the filter stereo linked, you can still hear some really interesting stereo stuff. So that's kind of cool. So the first thing I thought I'd start doing is trying to tune in some uh, drone notes, and I ran into some trouble. I'll show you why. So. What happens though is that as you starve the voltage, these don't stay in tune anymore. You can hear that that's no longer an actual fifth. That one. And as I take it out, you hear the tuning change again. For you guitar nerds, it totally reminds me of trying to tune uh, your first guitar, like a Squire or an Epiphone or something. And as you tune one string, the other string goes out of tune, so you're constantly sort of sifting across these strings trying to get in tune. That said, you can avoid all that just by keeping the voltage up at this fully, this, this maximum amount. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, I mean, it is what it is, uh, but it just basically means that if for me, I would, when I'm exploring these things, I'm always going to have the voltage up to full and not starving it at all. You know, all, all sort of limitations aside, I actually really like the sound of this droning. And if we start playing around with the filter, so turning up the resonance, I think it sounds really nice. And if you add some reverb, it sounds... Very, very nice. <laughs> so I'm not even going to touch these things probably very much today, these weird ball um, oscillators. Uh, they do cool stuff. So there's, there's definitely cool stuff there to uh, explore and to play around with. That feels like a finishing touch kind of <laughs> oscillator or kind of sound, so I'll play with that after. So the main thing I'm going to show you next is the um, uh, VCO-A and VCO-B. So VCO-A and VCO-B are two more of your oscillators. I've only been playing with A, but I think it sounds mighty nice, especially through the filter. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. 
So that's this thing here, and I'm running it as a saw, uh, sawtooth. And then again, when you have like delay or reverb or something, it's amazing. So I think that sounds great. Uh, I've been just using one, but one of the cool things is that you could uh, get the second one going. Let's get it tuned. Tuning time. And then once you have them uh, tuned, you can actually uh, stereo pan them. So pan them left and right. And then you have this really nice binaural thing. And again, with some filter and some reverb. There's something there. There's gonna be something there for sure. Let's talk about the effects. So the effects are these chips, which are really, really cool. So I'm gonna use this one here. This is the Infinity chip, just to start, to give you an idea. Some of these effects chips have reverbs. Some of them have, um, I don't know, a bit reduction, sample reduction. Some of them have a full synthesizer. I don't know how that one works. I'll check that out later. Okay, so this is the reverb now. Sounds great. But can you hear all that noise? The effects just have some baked in noise. Now, many of you know, I just don't really care. I actually usually think that noisy things sound better. But when it's something really clean like a reverb, it does kind of stick out. This is a great sounding reverb algorithm, but ultimately the amount of um, extra sound means I would use it as a as a color effect rather than a um, an all the time kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to show you about the effects is that I think it's just better to use external reverb and delay and then to use the really interesting weird stuff. All right, let's try and write a song. <laughs> You can edit the scale here. It's probably hard to see, but it's actually really easy to use. You can just load in a pre-existing scale, but a lot of the music I've been making these days uh, does, it borrows chords, it flits in and out of major and minor scales. It's really, one of the things I'm really trying to do is to get out of grids as much as possible to make it much more, I don't know, organic or for lack of a better term. So to do that, uh, you, can, you can set your own scale. You can edit the scale. But the limitations on this are, are a bit surprising for me. So here it's set to major. And you can also set it to um, a chromatic scale, which is great. But if you try to do anything kind of in the middle, it won't let you sort of do what you want. Let's do our major scale again, and then we'll edit the scale. 
And so one of the things I would want is to have control, to have both the major and the minor notes. It's very small, so you probably can't see it, but I would want to have it so that I have both the, the major, which if we're playing in C would be E, and then the minor, which would be uh, E flat. I would want both of them, but um, when you set it like this, when you add in that extra note, you'll hear it's still just the uh, major scale. What I tried doing first was like playing a song where I had the drone going. And again, I only played for the, with this for an hour, but I did like this. And then I was like... And then try to use the scale mode to go over to um, Aeolian minor. And then go... then you got to load it in again it's just there's gonna be a lot of clicking that way so instead what I did is I just edited the scale to have uh, the one sort of weird or color note that was most important to me so it's almost a major scale with that minor sixth uh, so with that note um, you know I'm hearing this is the root note obviously But it'd be really nice uh, for the other notes to be, I think, uh, the fourth, the sixth, the, that, that minor version of the sixth. And then instead of the major seventh, have it be um, the minor seventh there instead. So if this were in C again, have um, the last chord be a, um, a B flat, right? So that's what I'm going to try and tune this to. I'm going to try and tune these drones. somewhere around there. And then maybe if I'm getting ambitious, I will tune some more of these. Just in case if I want to put them in later, like that. Let's do it with some reverb so it sounds cooler. Not bad. That was actually a quicker tuning job than I thought it was going to be. Now the next note is that one. There we go. And there we go, put in the fifth, just in case we want it. We're getting closer, definitely gonna need to do some tuning uh, with an actual tuner. And now the next note I want is the just below the root note. So now with all of it, I think I've got my chord progression here, something like this. Still got some tuning issues, but like, there's the song. That's, I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, I'm literally just writing the song on the spot. <laughs> 
Should I do some ooze over top? <laughs> okay, you get the point. Uh, here's my current songwriting idea. Having all of these um, three note drones open at the beginning and doing that uh, slow. And then once I get to somewhere, I've done that a couple times and I like it, turn on the hold, hold that for a second, turn off all of these third oscillators so that now it's much more droney and then I can play along. And there's the song, and just opening the filter more and more, adding more and more uh, resonance, maybe adding in the Marikai just to get some really nice And if I wanted, I could go up an octave to a... Uh... But I hope you can see that like the song basically writes itself. I just basically tuned the first drone to the first oscillator and everything naturally came out of there. So yeah, I really honestly think uh, this thing is just a playground meant to be explored. There's probably a million things I can do, but this is the very first place I went. I only have this thing for two weeks. I'm going to try and record a song today. I think I'm going to keep it exactly like what you've seen today uh, and actually turn it into uh, a song. I might actually sing along with this. Oh God, what am I thinking? But I might. Yeah, so um, I hope this is cool. Have a great day. Take care. I'm going to go write some music. Bye now. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for coming along.